We looked at the popularity of the government. Let's spend some time on how the voters of this country perceive the opposition. So the first question that was asked by C Voter for India today when we are tracking the opposition is, can the India Alliance beat the BJP? So here are the responses to this question. Can the India Alliance beat the BJP? 33% of the respondents in this Mood of the Nation poll saying that yes, this can happen. Uh, 54% saying no, that cannot happen. So 54% of the respondents don't seem to think the India Alliance can beat the BJP. Uh, after this, let's come to the next question. What's the opinion on the name India? What's your opinion on the name India? Here are the responses to that question. This will fetch additional votes, say 39% of the respondents. Won't fetch votes, say 30% of the respondents. Neither a catchy name nor will it fetch votes, say 18% of the respondents. But there is some traction. You, know, you can't take away the fact that India has 39% traction. So it's not a bad idea or a failure. There is some purchase there. Interesting that 39% say this opposition name India will get traction. You could argue what's in a name. But it's a substantial number, you'd think. So clearly, uh, Rahul Verma, a name like India gets traction. Uh, it appears at the moment, at least the opposition has got one thing right. They've got a decent name. Uh, yes, Rajdeep, I don't want to uh, disagree on the name, uh, since this is also uh, name of a country. But I think, you know, uh, two points. One, people at the end are not going to, they don't vote for alliance. They vote for political parties and candidates. So yes, by getting the name, by getting those two meetings and moving forward, I think opposition parties have done a half a decent chance and perhaps their best efforts in last nine years. Whether it can actually catapult them to take on BJP and beat them, I think uh, that's too far at the moment. Even the 39% or 40% number you are uh, suggesting, think of it. Basically what we are getting, a divide into 40 to 60 ratio. Even if you look at the question on uh, uh, government performance, you had 60% people who were basically saying BGP has done well, 20% dissatisfied and 20% no opinion. And so that's what my first point was in the intervention, which is a large portion of people have already made up their mind where they are tilting. And so this 39% who's saying that it's a decent name is largely who are already voting for uh, 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 opposition parties, perhaps some additional votes from so, uh, uh, you know, non-aligned and, and uh, non-identifiers at the moment. Right. If you add the 30% uh, percent people who said it won't get them vote and 18%, it's not a catchy name, that's the 48-50%. Let's, so let's look at, let's look at from there. Different. I take your point. Let's look at best suited to lead India. In January 2022, Rahul Gandhi was at 11%. In August 2023, about 20 months later, he's at 24%. So this is, remember, best suited to lead the opposition. Mamta Banerjee was 17%, went up to 20% in August 2022, is now down to 15%, but she comes in number two, joint with Mr. Kejriwal, who at his peak in August 2022 was actually twice as much as Rahul Gandhi at 27%. So Rahul Gandhi has doubled in the last 18 months and even compared to January 2023 he's up from 13% to 2024 and when you are asked the opinion on Rahul Gandhi's disqualification 31% said fair decision harsh decision was 21% politically motivated was 31% you add the last two it's about 52% so Rahul Gandhi interestingly within the opposition space only Rohan Gupta seems to have gained it's not as if he's gained vis-a-vis -vis Prime Minister Modi He's only gaining within the opposition. And that builds on what Rahul Verma said, that those who've decided to vote for Mr. Modi and the BJP, they have no time for India or Rahul Gandhi. It's only within the opposition that Rahul Gandhi's traction has increased. I don't agree with this analysis because as uh, we have seen, as I told in my earlier uh, uh, point, that when you look at the state elections, BJP has no other issue than Mr. Modi. They do not have governance issue, so they do not have that performance of the government to be shown. Only thing they fight is either Modi or Hindutva. 
and in in Karnataka, you are also there, Rajdeep. I think they gave it all, everything, Mr. Modi's roadshow, Hindu, Muslim, and after that, also if they lose badly, I think we are missing something very, very huge. We cannot forget that price rise and all these issues are very, very important. No, number no, but we one, are number about two. Rahul Gandhi so on that. Trying, Rahul yes. Gandhi's traction I'm has sure. increased within the I'm, opposition. I'm, I'm absolutely. I am coming to. I am coming to Mr. Rahul Gandhi's point. If you see more than 50% people think that either the decision is harsh or wrong. And after that decision, I think it has really boomeranged on BJP. Rahul Gandhi's image is, is increasing day by day because people have realized that something wrong has happened to him. And you will see in future that this is whatever gap you are showing. I don't agree if this with you. Yes, gap, Deshmuk, we wouldn't have the two Congress thinks BJP. Rahul Gandhi's graph is on the way up. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. One is that, yes, relative to how low he'd fallen, he's bouncing back. The other is he's coming back to kind of where he was at his peak. So it's not as if he's come close to Prime Minister Modi. He's fallen and he's kind of bounced back to where he was, where he's first amongst the opposition leaders in terms of popularity. But given the fact that the Congress is the only pan-India national opposition party, that really shouldn't even be a question. Well, they think that Rahul Gandhi is... Numbers are up because the voter tracker has been showing consistently that the numbers are going up. But that's 50% uh, of the numbers that they are trusting. The other half uh, problem is that they are unwilling to accept that, uh, you know, this way up, as you just mentioned, is from the rock bottom where he was two years back, where there were three opposition leaders scoring more than Rahul Gandhi, you know. And then from there in Bharat Jodo Yatra, we did a tracker on Bharat Jodo Yatra where it started improving. Post Karnataka, the numbers have also improved further. But it is courtesy, the numbers of Arvind Kejriwal, they are dropping. Numbers of Mamta Banerjee, that is dropping. So others in the India alliance, that is dropping. And Rahul Gandhi is consolidating. That's the fact. But the problem with this entire uh, scene is, this is not going to create much of an electoral impact till the point of time Rahul Gandhi's numbers start increasing at the cost of numbers of Mr. Narendra Modi. That's the issue. Unless because that Kejriwal kind of thing like happens, is an anomaly. electorally it Given is that not his going to make was only impact. in Delhi and Punjab, he really ought not to have been the number one opposition leader. The fact that he was suggests how bad Rahul Gandhi's ratings were. Rahul Gandhi's kind of bounced back after falling low. How do you see the Rahul's glass? Rahul glass, half full or half empty? I, uh, before you yeah. come, Raj, and you can sure. respond to that because you know India today had Rahul Gandhi. I remember on the cover uh, after uh, the December 2018 elections, and you know he was seen as suddenly the real game changer. Now, what seems to have happened? Opinion on Rahul Gandhi after Bharat Jodo. No, I, I need improved, to go ahead. Improved is... Uh, go ahead. Okay, go with so, those numbers because that will give uh, Raj a chance to explain this. Okay, so on the question of the Bharat Jodo Yatra and people's perception of it, has the Bharat Jodo Yatra improved the perception around Rahul Gandhi? Here are the responses in this poll. 44% of the sample said that Rahul Gandhi's perception has improved as a result of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. 33% saying it's the same, 13% say it's worsened. So what's clear as day ratching up is that the Bharat Jodo Yatra has salvaged a reputation which was pretty much in the political dust. So he's come back to some extent. Now whether you think he's rising like a phoenix or it'll still just be you know, a bonsai and won't really become a full big banyan tree, you can play around with different kinds of metaphors and analogies, but that's the reality. You're seeing the glass is half empty or half full. Well, let's look at this way, that as you rightly said, he was down in the dumps and he has certainly, I'm very innovatively, let's give him credit for it, uh, and the fact that he'd walked all this distance across and raised issues of concern to the country, he has in many senses matured, reinvented himself, whatever words you'd like to do it, Bharat Jodo Yatra has given Rahul Gandhi the push, and if you'd like to look at it Yeshwan's way, it has helped him considerably. Whether it has made him challenge more, uh, Prime Minister Modi or has just uh, you know overtaken the other opposition leaders, the the fact remains he's now become once again the principal challenger to uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi when it comes to uh, op the, the opposition putting up a candidate. The other interesting development, and I think you should look at this together. They're not separate. The fact that. India as an alliance was formed at the same time. And, you know, the Congress allowed this. Normally, it was the Congress that said, we are not going to be uh, giving our leadership up to any of the other parties. 
So you now have a very interesting development that has happened where finally all the big guns of the opposition have got together, whether it is Mamta Banerjee, whether it is Nitish Kumar, who, who was always on the other camp. You, uh, on, uh, in the south, you have Stalin. You know, you have now built up, and in Maharashtra, you have the Shiv Sena coming in. NCP was always there. So uh, the BJP, and you can see that they are feeling threatened in many senses by the way they moved in Maharashtra to bring up Ajit Pawar. This is not, the numbers may not reflect it, but this is certainly a very important development that has happened. And given that though, you know, Mr. Modi's popularity remains very high, the concerns that no, you're saying they're rattled, I could say they're being overcautious. Not they want to no, win just, big, I, you know, let, in let the way the finish. BJP sees this. Let me this. just finish. Yeah. The fact is that you have economic concerns as high as that we saw, what we said as the failures of the uh, government that is there. This gives them an opportunity. If the opposition is able to get, to get its act together, has rallying points like uh, price rise, unemployment, they, I think, what the, the combination of Bharat Jodo Yatra and the Indian Alliance now will start beginning begin to pose a formidable threat to Prime Minister Modi. And therefore, the, the BJP has to be even more uh, you know, careful about how it deals with the next nine months.